Let me take you to Israel. I know some people don't like me telling the truth about Israel, but it's going to be told here. Let me show you the video of what's happening in Israel. I know the world is focused <clears throat> on the conflict in Ukraine. What you just witnessed were Israeli forces, police forces, brutalizing, assaulting, attacking Palestinians, including children. What you saw should shock your soul. They were being sprayed with a substance that smells like rotting flesh. They were being beaten. As a matter of fact, one of those clips is a child, a female child being beaten, physically beaten with fist by Israeli police. Now there are some Israeli based groups that have come out against this discriminatory activity. And they are denouncing the Israeli police for acting in such a manner against Palestinians. So I do not want you to take away from this that all Israelis think alike no more than all Americans think alike. They are not monolithic. But this is a truth that we have to highlight because this has barely been covered on the national scale. But we were covered on this national show. Let me give you some background. This was yesterday, Palestinians gathered together to do what? To celebrate their religious festivities. Uh, and they have been met with not only threats, but also physical violence. Um, the, the festival includes face paintings, they sell particular items. Um, it's a celebration, okay? So I'm gonna get into that in a minute. Israeli police attack Palestinians at Damascus Gate in Jerusalem, um, who were celebrating uh, their Muslim holiday religious festival, festival making Prophet Muhammad's journey to the heavens, all right? Uh, and this is something that's common, is, is done. And it's typically celebrated by those who identify across the globe, all right? Tensions grew in the city as more people arrived at Al Aqsa Mosque. The Israeli police assaulted and clashed with Palestinians before bringing a sewage water vehicle to disperse the protesters, all right? And they say you can't get this smell out of your skin for days, okay? Dozens of Palestinians were injured and others were detained. Sources in Jerusalem said the occupation forces arrested at least four civilians, including a child after assaulting them. You had stun grenades shot directly at Palestinians. It injured multiple children. This is a picture of an 11 year old girl who was a special needs child who was shot in the face. She has a broken jaw. She has a massive laceration on her face and on her neck. Look at that, there's also a six month old baby who was injured from the shrapnel from the grenade. 
Updated numbers, uh, Israeli forces reportedly injured 31 Palestinians, arrested 20. Many of those arrested were under the age of 15. They were simply exercising a festival right based on their religion, not harming anyone. This was not even a protest. This was an exhibition of their values. And this is what happened. The confrontations raised doubts about an Israeli decision to reduce tensions in the region before Ramadan, which this year falls at the beginning of April. The Israeli authorities had decided to forego the iron barriers at the Damascus Gate area this year during Ramadan month. It will instead allow cultural activities, including opening Ramadan tents and kiosks selling food and sweets to maintain calm. However, the Palestinians first celebration in the region held after the decision was met with police violence. Let me remind everybody, Israeli police force, they are the civilian police. They are under the direct jurisdiction of the Minister of Public Security. It is a nationalized police force, okay? All right, Bane, what are your thoughts on this? What comes to mind immediately, bro, is um the late great Nipsey Hussle. Yeah. What would, how would you react if we murdered your children? Mm. He said in a verse, how would you react if we murdered your children? My mind goes to law enforcement and the abuse of power. You were talking earlier about defund the police. And if that's realistic or the reactions that are happening around United States with regard to that terminology. Something is going on in the training and the psychology of those we are entrusting to, to co-produce public safety. Again, it's public safety. So anytime we're, we're reaching for that, there has to be buy-in by a myriad of community stakeholders. It's not one agency or entity's duty or responsibility to produce justice or public safety, but something's going wrong here and abroad when we see this type of behavior. These are entrusted people. I think that persons in this seat or capacity of law enforcement should have to have your education level of a PhD or better. If you're gonna carry a firearm, if you're gonna be militarized on that level, there needs to be a standard that well exceeds what we have now. Just a thought on how we should radically revolutionize what we call law enforcement and public safety. You make a really compelling argument about who is attracted to the position. Who is attracted to the position? And that's why I've always advocated for six months in, you have to do a psychological evaluation for the rest of your career every six months. Because sometimes a psychologist may miss it. And other times the cop you hired on day one is not the same cop a year from that day. All right, I and love you it. need to pick up on that. Okay, I love it, I love yeah. it, I love it. That is from that, that's, we should write that policy brother, that's real. Yeah, and some it. some places are doing it, not the six months. We got one place that's doing it every two years. I know the city of Atlanta was entertaining it um, as a policy guide rather than a policy mandate, but it has to be mandated for it to be enforced. You already know how that works. 